Hi, it's Santa Cruz Tomei Star and D. Well, <clears throat> if you saw my video of the little blueberry, we're going to uh, try and make our own coil over shock. We have a coil spring, which is for a small body shock, but the problem is, is that this thing won't fit like this. So I've got, I got this other one chucked up in the um, lathe, and we're going to cut this tubing off, and we're going to make a little mount up here to hold the top of the spring. Now uh, this is something I've already made up. This is a uh, piece of pipe, I believe, that I cut so many threads per inch on there. And I'm going to use this to be able to adjust the bottom of my shock. I'm going to cut this in half so I don't need the whole thing because the spring isn't going to have to get that far wound up. So we're going to kind of show you how this is done. And that's how we do that. Well, now that we got these cut off, we can uh, continue on. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to measure this, and we're going to make an aluminum piece that will slide on here, and then catch on this round part here to keep the spring centered around the shock. These springs you can buy on eBay or other places. Uh, this one happens to be a 350-pound spring. That means that for every inch, it's going to take 350 pounds to compress it. I've got some aluminum here, but it's a little bit big. And that's okay, because I can cut it down. As you can see here, this thing has got a little bit of run out. So we'll go ahead and straighten that out, and then we're going to take and center it all the end so we can support it. Let's see how much the spring measures here. Looks like it's about 2,800 2, 2 on the uh, diameter, 2 inches, 800 thousandths. So I know that this is 3 inches, so I need to cut 100 thousandths off of each side. Alright, we're going to make our second and final cut. Next step is to measure the inside diameter, and that looks about like one inch nine hundred thousandths. I'm going to cut this down to one inch nine hundred so I can have a little step that'll fit on the inside of the spring to keep it centered. I'm going to try our spring, and that means we have to force it on there just a tiny little bit, but that's good. I'm going to measure our bar on here and it measures about 434 thousandths which means the 7 16 row will work just fine. And then I'm going to trim up this end.
Well, I've got my distance cut up, uh, set at about four thousandths. And now we're going to cut this off. looks like so far after we get the other one made and cut off then we'll take this piece out and then we'll put this in the lathe and then cut a little chamfer on here and then cut a relief in here for a shock then all we'll have to do is take and cut a slot in here so this will go around the shaft well our next job to do is to cut a relief in here so that it will hold on to the shock when we put that onto the uh, shaft here It looks like our recess is going to have to be about 200,000 feet. Let's cut a slot. We got this set up in the middle so we can cut our slot. That's about it. All right, we're all done with our top mounts. Let's see how they fit. Oh, perfect, look at that. Let's see how it fits down the spring. And there we go. Well, there we have the uh, first half of our homemade coilover shock. Let's go ahead and get busy on the bottom end here now. Well, I've already cut this to size and faced this off a bit. So now we're going to start and pre-drill this with a one-inch bit. And then we can machine this out to size. And then we're going to cut some threads. I changed over to a boring tool, and now I'm going to start boring this out. Well, we're going to try this for a camera angle, <laughs> see if it works. We're ready to cut our threads. Cutting 20 threads per inch.
Okay, I think we're finally done. And as you can see, our piece screws on there real nice. So now all I have to do is cut them to length. Well, we're just about done. We've got the uh, shock assembled. And I don't have this piece down here welded yet, but that'll come soon. I did drill some holes in here so we can actually adjust these things on the car, make it a little easier. And all I have to do is figure out the right height on the thing and get those uh, adjuster barrels welded into place and we're going to have some coilover shocks on the Fiat. Yippee! If you have questions about making coilovers for your car, give me a call here at Costa Mesa R&D. We'll see you soon.